If you don't have any responsibility and pressure, you know, no matter what you eat, it tastes like heaven. And you don't even care what you eat, yeah. As long as it's vegan, of course. And in uh, in Rishikesh, for example, or many holy places, they don't sell alcohol, eggs, meat, nada. It's forbidden. Mm. So if you live there, are you sure you just eat vegan? You don't need to ask. <laughs> People also sell vegan all the time. Even a small vendor on the street is all vegan, nothing else. I would love to stay there forever. Mm. Now, when I think about it, I, I still feel very nostalgic. About 10, 15 years back, some masters in Rishikesh, they used to promote veganism. Like I was a child when I read the pamphlet promoting veganism, mm -hmm. that we shouldn't... Uh, Where? In Rishikesh. In Rishikesh, no yes, need to promote. Everybody sells vegan only. Yes. I oh, I mean for the, the visitors. For the visitors, yes. I'm oh, you did? You gone there? Yes, Master. Wow. I didn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that place. But I didn't live in downtown, you know. I live on higher mountain, only mud houses in natural water. But next to the Ganges, that's where I live. Just walk down, you know, one, two, or three minutes. Not really three minutes. I walk slow. And then you can immerse yourself. Mm. Even in summer, the water is so cool. So cool. Melted from the ice from the top. Always melted ice coming down. Very cool. <laughs> Another apple juice. Tell you, whatever I take, come on. Mm. <laughs> From all the places that I, I went in India, I miss Rishikesh the most. Mm. Because everything good happened there, you know, and I live in a small mud hut, but I love it so much. Every day I went to sleep on the roof, you know, and there are always some people who join me, you know, a couple of people, you know, Westerners around me. And, and then I, I have, you know, natural water coming out to wash my clothes, to cook. I cook very little, but it was still good water. And then go down in the Ganges to do ablutions, and then, um, put the clothes on the rocks to dry. One, two hours only, and then you can wear it. I miss that place. If I have a chance, I go back there again. Just that mud house and the water next to, nearby, and the Ganges down there. Not even three minutes. I'd, it's not long, it's just right on the ban banks of the river. Just very high, so you have to go down a little bit sloppy, but a very good road. Mm. Just dirt road, but very good to go. I also stay in the Ramsala, in the forest, mm. also in a mud house. It's more civilized there. A lot of people, a lot of Westerners, a lot of monks and nuns all the time. But I like Rishikesh more. I almost drowned over there, and I still like it. Because I went into the middle of the Ganges to meditate, and that day it rained from the upper level, the, the water covered all the stone. I could not see any stepping stone, but I somehow I came home. I am. Now I can't remember how I did it. Because when the water is high, you don't see anything. When it's not high, it's been too for stones. Just step and go out. I met one yogi, you know. He lived on in the cave and the Ganges, yeah? And he seemed an holy man. So I came and paid homage to him. I offered a, a melon. That's all I couldn't afford that time. Melon very cheap. In India, everything cheap. My clothes also, even tailor-made, yeah, very cheap. 
And uh, just cotton, you know. I chose the cheapest cotton. It was still beautiful, you know. They made it and fit me. Two pairs. And then I met this yogi. He was the old man. He sat in the cave and there some disciples surrounding him. So I said to him, well, Master, it's not comfortable that you live here like this because the, the wind is blowing and the sand is blowing everywhere. Don't you feel uh, uncomfortable? Don't you feel too, too harsh, no? He said, no. There are many people who live in more harsh condition than I. Wow. So I shut up. It was right. It was right. Yeah. I knew that in India, you know, but what I meant was that a master, you know, should not endure so much. That's what I mean. He was older already. He should be somewhere comfortable, being looked after, you know. Mm. That's what I mean. Mm. But he couldn't have care less, so I couldn't have care less. And then I asked him, Oh, master, what do you advise me to do, you know, for enlightenment? He didn't say a lot, you know, but his English was perfect. He told me, go there. There's a little island in the middle there, middle of Ganges River. Ganges River big, you know. It's not like this, huh? Go there, meditate. I say, aye, aye. <laughs> I didn't say aye, aye, but I say yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I will meditate, you know. I asked him how long. He said, one week. And then see how you go. I told you this story already, right? When did I tell you? Can't remember when. No, in the BMD, right? Huh? Long back. No, I just heard somewhere. In Los Angeles in 1997, I think. I thought I just heard it somewhere a few days ago, no? No? How come I remember as if I just tell you now? Oh. Maybe I told somebody. So I went there, meditated, six days. One more day left, and my ex-husband came. I don't know how he found me in such a desolated area. It's a mountain. It's not like downtown where all the gurus and all the bichu come, you know. No, just um, three or four divided mud houses, you know? Very cheap, though. No? And there was water running from the mountain behind my house. I washed my clothes and stuff. Water was very clean. I don't know how it was. So clean, like crystal. Mm. I washed my house, drink and that. Mm. And then he came. <laughs> I was washing my clothes. He came right behind me. Now, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then I said, oh, you know, no, oh, you came. Hello, and all that. <laughs> how did you find me? You say he has this. Magic. He showed me my photo. Mm. That was his magic. <laughs> he went every post office, every stop from Delhi all the way to Rishikesh. Yeah. And I live on the top of a mountain, not right top, but you know, where just a few people live there. It's not, uh, it's not where the temples and ashrams, no. Only two or three people together. Not together, each one had a room. And then, okay, wow, okay, I don't remember what I said to him or anything. He said, oh, I have to hurry now. Can you hang around? i come back soon. I have to go one more day. Yeah, meditation. And then when I came back, he was gone. It was. One Chinese from Canada. He just came before my ex-husband came. He came and he said, yeah, I have nowhere to stay. No, you stay here, in my room. I don't stay anyway. And the, the couch, I don't sleep. I sleep upstairs with a sleeping bag only. So you're welcome. Stay here. Because he said his girlfriend was coming and he it was looking for a room to rent. I say, in a few days, there's a room empty next to me. You can, you know, settle here meanwhile. <laughs> so I left him there, you know, his luggage, his backpack and live there. And then I left. Meanwhile, my husband came, you know. I left, I went to meditate. It was far, I had to walk maybe, maybe three kilometers from where my house was. I walked to where I meditated on a little island in the middle. 
The master didn't say anything. Just say, go meditate, as if I knew everything already. He didn't say how to meditate, nothing. He didn't talk a lot. <laughs> Except tell me, don't touch that girl because she's Brahmin. I was unworthy, understand me? Brahmin, you don't touch them. Except you, you're a Brahmin too, you have to wear something to prove it, <laughs> a threat. I don't know, women don't wear this, right? Men wear, so how do we, uh, I prove that I'm a woman Brahmin? Woman cannot be Brahmin, right? Mostly it's because of the male, it is the family is considered mm -hmm. Brahmin. Mm -hmm. If the male is a Brahmin, then the family is considered Brahmin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But women, I don't remember if they have any distinguishing. Nobody asked what I did. Anyway, because I, the little girl went to the Ganges wanted to fetch some water with my bucket, and I tried to help her, and she screamed at me. <laughs> <laughs> so Master said, don't touch the Brahmin. I said, okay, sorry. And then I uh, meditated, blah, blah, blah. I went to meditate, and when I came back, it was dark already. Yeah, He was gone. Only that so-called boyfriend was left behind. I say, where is my husband? He left. Why did he leave? He came to find me. Why he just came? He didn't even talk to me a lot. He left. Why? And that camera is mine, huh? Why, why is it here? He probably left it for me. He probably thought that was my boyfriend. Ah, nothing was further from the truth, right? Eh? I, I did not have a boyfriend <laughs> to begin with. Not let alone Chinese, huh? <laughs> Chinese. And a raw Chinese. Very raw. <laughs> he cheated. He eat raw, but he eat chapati also. Chapati is not raw. <laughs> he didn't eat raw chapati. He eat cooked chapati. <laughs> and the rest was raw. Fine. I say, what did he say? And he didn't say much. He said, he's going back to Germany. He gave me his camera. I said, what? That camera I gave to him for birthday. Why he gave to you? What did you say to him? What did you say to him? I begin to get <laughs> angry. Uh, is there nothing? He asked me if, if I live here. I said, yes. <laughs> he said, say, yes, he lived there. You sleep here? Yeah, I sleep. Only one bed. Mm. That was my room. When he wasn't there, I showed my ex-husband that this was my room. And the, the boy came back and said, it was his room. <laughs> Coincidence. <laughs> yeah. Even you write one book, you cannot explain yourself. So he said, oh, okay, I, I understand. How long did he live? Just now. So I ran down the mountain. I didn't have a lot of money, but I hired a couch. Normally, you go together with ten people at least on a horse carriage couch because it's cheaper. Nobody hides the whole couch. I say, I want this couch. He say, expensive. Money, money, no. I say, yeah, money, money, okay. <laughs> I, pay. I say, I pay here, I pay here, you know. I couldn't really afford it that much, but never mind. I thought I don't, I, if I don't have samosa for a few days, that would be okay. Mm. So I ran to the bus station, and the bus ticket man say, just left. Just now, like in the movies. I arrived, he left, just like that. And I have no means to catch up, you know? Not with my horse carriage, no matter how much money, money I pay, it wouldn't catch up. The bus is <laughs> gone. <laughs> oh, man. But I really like that place so much. I don't know why I like it so much. But then he came back, huh? I, I wrote him a telegram. It's another thing I could not afford. Every day I, I calculate how much money I must use. But if I eat one more samosa, then next day I could not. <laughs> but I was very happy there, I was very happy. If I have to choose somewhere to live, I go back there again. It seems so free, you know? The house was dirt cheap. You pay rent, it's just like cadeau, you know? Like like gift. It was nothing much. And people were so friendly. I even had like chiropractor, you know, punching my body for free. <laughs> I never knew what chiropractor it was until that day. But he was very gentle, not like one of those chiropractor in China. Oh, my God. Oh, my body screamed out. He was very gentle. I said, I don't have any money. He said, never mind, pray for you. Yeah. He twisted me around, punched me around. I feel very comfortable. 
He's a doctor, chiropractor. I don't know what the heck he was doing in such a lonely mountain like that, and renting the room. I have a bed there ready for punching people. <laughs> yeah. I didn't inquire too much anymore after that. And then he was just a neighbor, you know? And he did his thing, I did my thing. I, I never bury, bury anybody. But people bury me, you know? Wash my hands, punch my body, massage, braid my hair, stuff like that. <laughs> Very friendly people, even visitors. He's from Philippines, he, he's not Indian. He went there, I don't know, maybe a holiday or something. I never asked. If you have a free massage already, better run quick, in case he changes his mind. You have no money to pay, no? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very nice. I really like that place. I have no idea why. This is my favorite of all the Indian places. You know, drums allow also you can rent a room very cheaply. Also mud house, you know? But I did not really enjoy that much. Like in Rishike. Maybe the ambience, you know? Hmm. The atmosphere, no? Everybody who went there had to be vegan. They had no choice. <laughs> What for you to go there promoting veganism? They had no choice. <laughs> 